Y'all are the sunshine of my life And that's why I'll always be around And you are the apple of my eye Forever you stay in my heart I feel like this is the beginning Though I loved you for a million years And if I thought our love was ending I'd find myself drowning in my tears Whoa, oh. y'all know the rest. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the mental house with your host, Khadija. How y'all doing today? I am doing fabulous. I am so glad to be on this side of the dirt today. That I can rejoice and say, be glad <laughs> that first of all, that we are in the land of the living. So if y'all clicking me on, that means you're with me too. So I just want to say hello to you and good morning. I wanted to do that special song for somebody very special. It is your birthday today and you know how much I love you. So... That was for you. And you already know who you are, so I don't have to go any further than that. But what I wanted to do is I want to uh, encourage those of you who have not seen uh, the production. And if you have, please leave a comment for me so we can open this up for discussion. And that is mm, the Netflix um uh, 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 original series Making of a Murderer I think that's the name of it and however it is the story of Stephen Avery and his uh, nephew uh, Brendan um, I, first of all I find this story because I remember every bit of the details and not only that um, back in the day when I was a ball the collar shot collar before I fell from grace all the way down to the ground. No, I used to hang out um, actually uh, at a resort called the Fox Hills Resort, which is located in Michicot, Wisconsin, and which is like five, ten minutes, whatever. You know, these little hick towns, they're all like stuck together. So it's just like you jump in the car and you ride down to the corner and then you're in Michicot. I mean, you're in two rivers. Um, manner to walk, and so this is where. And I used to love to stay in the Bob Hope Suite. Um, and so I'm familiar with the area. I'm familiar with the junkyard. I have been up there. Oh my God! And not to um, you know, have any. Um, first of all, let me say this, and this is no disrespect to the Harborough family. Who have lost a loved one. And I'm saying this because. Um, I've had a sister and a brother. Who were murdered. Okay. So I'm very sensitive about. Um, this type of stuff. Okay. And so I don't want to minimize. Nor do I want to. Um, feel like I'm patronizing. You know. Y'all's grief or anything like that. But a lot of times when we experience something like that you know we just want any fucking body to pay for it i know i did i i, I very much understand a, uh, a gang mentality when you do something to somebody that you love and then you want to roll down on them and just do something to them to the person that perpetrated that hate to your loved one and if you're not in your right mind I, you will do it okay because it's very easy to get caught up in your emotions. But if you're not behind and not in control of even your emotions. Then you'll get caught up in, you know, he got me so I'm going to get him back. Because that's the anger 
that you feel. So I really understand that. So I don't want to have no disrespect for, to the Harbaugh family. Um, and because it was very unfortunate. Um, but I want to encourage y'all to watch that series. Oh my God. It's like 10, 10 episodes, 9 or 10. Um, based on how they handled that case. How Stephen Avery was already spent and as black folk I'm you know we should be very sensitive to, to this type of stuff but it should also let you know that even though we are the perpetual whipping children of, of um, uh, white supremacy I just want you to know that they'll get their own too uh, Kennedy showed you that they'll uh, Abraham Lincoln I mean they'll blow their own brains out so you know you know we don't have nothing coming <laughs> so the point I'm trying to make, I'm sorry, I've digressed. <laughs> Keep me get back on task. Um, anybody who hasn't had a chance to watch that series, Avery was convicted before of just craziness, rape, I think, and some and what a assault and whatever, and he spent 18 years in jail for a crime he didn't commit. And that was horrible in this little town of Manitowoc. So he wasn't like a lot of these uh, black folks that come out of jail, you know, and say, well, you know, I'm going to pray for it. And whatever they offer me, I'm going to take because I'm just so glad to get my freedom. No, dude was like, no, they fucked up my life and I want to get paid because, see, his whole mindset is deep. He's still in the control group. OK, so the control group still think, uh, you know, hey. They don't, they don't accept the shit that uh, uh, black folks accept. Okay? So no matter what, he was going after his. And um, in fact, um, they took it to the federal court here in Milwaukee. Come to find out, um, they just, Manitowoc walk knew they couldn't pay that money, in my opinion. The next thing you know, I mean, this guy won the suit. I want y'all to fathom this now. He won the suit. They were going to have to pay him. Then all of a sudden, a lady that's going to buy a car stumbles upon his junk, their family uh, salvage yard. And he rapes her, kills her, changes her to a bed. And the nephew, uh, the cousin or whoever, the little young guy was, the little nephew, I believe, saw it as well. He helped chain her down to the bed. And one thing you must know about the nephew, I'll talk about him in just one second. But let me say it right now. He, you already know he's like, it seems like he's inbred. But I don't want to go there. But he's a he's a little deep and dumb. Something is not clicking right. He's, his intelligence level, it ain't up to par. You know what I mean? Lights on, nobody home. Shit. You know what the hell I'm talking about. Elevator don't go to the top floor. So, it's it's amazing how the young man confessed to under the police coercion. I don't want to tell you the whole thing because you got to look at it. It's insanity. But it really lets you see how this uh, judicial system, this whole court shit got to be burnt down. It's got to be just tore down. And start over again, and that's why I say I believe in revolution. I, you know, that's my thought, and that's just my thought process. Some things you can't fix. You can't put a band-aid on a bullet wound. <laughs> it's bleeding too much, you know. You don't have to either operate on this bitch, or cut it off, do whatever you need to do, but you cannot put a band-aid on a bullet wound. Stephen Avery. Spent 18 years in jail for no reason, and he won the lawsuit against them because it was it was so blatant that the sheriff, the judge, oh my God, they coerced to put this guy in jail. They didn't even care about the guy who actually committed the rape. They didn't like the Averys. It's really crazy. So I really want you guys, if you got Netflix, making of a murder, you got to see this. I can't think of nothing more crazier that helped happened in this town, um, um, in this state, I should say, other than Jeffrey Dahmer. You know, because when Jeff did what he did, I had people coming from all, 
all my relatives coming brewing down from Gary, St. Louis, and all over New York, talking about, let me see where, can you take me to the guy's house? Can you show me where the freaking crazy man lived? Um, I, I was like, are y'all serious? I can't even get you guys to come and visit me. And you people will drive all the way here to see Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment. The mayhem on 25th Street is what we call that here. Um, but I really can't think of a case that had more impact on um, us here than the Avery case. Not only, and I'm saying this for all people who are prisoners, uh, political prisoners, people who are locked in a way for crimes they didn't commit. You know, um, you got black men who are in jail because oh, I just read a story about a white woman said she thought she think he was the one who did it. So, you know, just by virtue of color of your skin, you already know they just what we have to understand. We are actually prisoners of war, and that's something we don't really want to deal with because, you know, if white people society has a cold, we got AIDS. Okay, but just the way that they did the Avery's was in my opinion is because they felt they were less than um they were like maybe the niggas of Manitowoc you know um <laughs> you know somebody they didn't like families they didn't like I don't know it just seemed like they can't they, they kind of like were um you know in my opinion, just from my crazy mind watching it, I thought maybe they, that a lot of people in the community thought maybe the Avery's were. And I think they even alluded to that in the, in the um, production itself, that they were pretty self-contained and they didn't want to be bothered with them or, you know, whatever. So the town really didn't care for them too much. And like I said, you can pick, pick up a rock in your hand and it's as far as you can throw it down the road, that's how big Manitowoc is. Okay? So it's very small, very close-knit. Um, my daughter got bored. <laughs> One day I took her because the resort is very nice. And she was likes like to swim and do all types of stuff like that. And I had the kids there. And I remember they wanted to go bowling. <laughs> and we got up and we drove through the town. And uh, we were like, okay, let's go downtown. Because, of course, I know it's small, but we'll go downtown and maybe we'll find something. Um, and, of course, you know, there was nothing but uh, maybe two bars and a store. So, when you go to some place like Manitowoc, Two Rivers, you would probably just go in there to to the resort that's there basically because I can't see you going to the town for anything other than if you know somebody that lives there so um, needless to say we didn't go we didn't get to go bowling because we couldn't find a bowling alley okay that's how small the place was so anyways if you have seen the production please tell me your opinion about it and you know what you think maybe we can have some dialogue about that because that was really uh, crazy and um, just want to know your opinion about it. And if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe. Um, I really appreciate you being out there with me. And um, uh, let's have some talk. Okay? All right. I'll see y'all next time. In the mental house.